Hey guys and gals, welcome to K6 Outdoors. I am your host, Kyle. It's been one year since we've been, you know, using the sun to make electricity. I thought I'd spend a few moments with you guys discussing this last year's performance. You know, did it work as expected? And, you know, you can tell the birds don't like them from the big splotch of feces in the middle. <laughs> thought I'd give you guys my one year update on them. See, do they perform as expected? anything pop up that I you know you guys should know about and what I still recommend solar to you all we are gonna go inside and uh, spend some time looking on the computer at the results because obviously the data is in the numbers and that's ultimately what most of you care about now we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about the system you know how it's holding up to the outdoor elements it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing what we're going to spend this time at is looking at the actual production results versus estimations and we're also going to look at the you know my electrical bill for the year did it offset like it was supposed to did i produce enough power did i overproduce you know what was the what was the end goal here right originally my system was sized to eliminate my electrical bill and 100 percent offset all of my usage so let's hop in here we're going to get on the solar edge app which you can use to monitor your power production and then we're going to compare it to uh, my Alliant Energy bill, which is my utility provider for electrical to show you guys what I consumed and you know Look at the net result So we've made our way into the house and up on the screen here I have data from my utility company that they use to basically double check the um, you know, The solar provider that their numbers are close and that my system isn't too big or too small They do this just to make sure you know the calculations are halfway correct and that you aren't going to produce too much electricity um, there's some rules based upon how much you can make. You can't overproduce too much because if you do that, well, you don't get reimbursed for it. And it's, it can be, you know, a waste for, for you, but then also it just helps them, helps them understand what the actual, you know, low us usage is going to be on the, the entire system. So I have highlighted up here in blue, you can kind of see they're expecting the system, you know, may output this range from 15,700 to 17,200 basically based upon my location. It's it's gonna vary a little bit just by fine tuning. Um, with the average up on the top of the screen here, they're saying around 16,314 kilowatts per year. Um, based upon my system size that's located, how it's you know tilted angled and it's fixed, you know, all that fun stuff. And it gives you a breakdown in months of performance. Now before we hop over to the Solar Edge app, I will go ahead and say that some of these data points are pretty good you know on some months i was meeting right at it some i was low some i was high some i was um you know nowhere close to meeting what they said i should make um but i think the big picture here which you'll see on the next screen is that you know we were in the ballpark all right so hopping over here to the solar edge app you guys are going to see day by day year by year output from my system this is the solar edge monitoring app basically it's just telling you what it's producing now what I have up on the screen is, is the actual forecasted model from gr &E Solar, which is now now not renewable. This is just kind of supplementing that other data we talked about from my local utility company's findings from that, uh, that PV Watts calculator they use. And if you see here on the screen where I'm pointing at, the blue is the consumption I generally have based upon my electrical bills. And the orange, if you will, or yellow, dark yellow, whatever you guys want to call it, is the expected production numbers. Now, obviously, you'll see in the winter months we're negative. In the, sum in the summer months, we peak in July in output. And then again in December, we drop back down. So we're overproducing in the summertime to be able to build a bank up to get us through January and February. Now, I'm going to hop over to the Solar Edge app to show you guys actuals, but I'll drop a photo here next to for comparison so you guys can see. But what you'll see is we actually had a pretty good dip in June. And our July never really peaked out. Our highest month was actually May last year for production. You know, that could be for various reasons. Temperature um, and, you know, what the actual um, irradiance we were getting to, to Earth that day was. Because that, you know, affects everything. Or obviously if there's any, any type of shading that can directly affect that. We had a lot of, you know, what I'm going to attribute to here is, you know, we had some sunny, a lot of hot sunny days. Which does bring down production a little bit. But that's, you know, that's part of the efficiency from these panels that's figured in the equation here but what was not figured in this equation was we had some very heavy wildfire smoke for the month of june and july and i really feel like that impacted produ production numbers quite a bit i mean it was very heavy you, you couldn't even see the sun on a lot of days um, just because it was so thick for multiple weeks 
Um, anyways, I really feel like that impacted these numbers. Again, comparing it to that picture on the screen here, it you, you can definitely see that we didn't quite perform as expected. Where my numbers really fell short is is the um, you know on the on the chart here they were forecasting production to still out out produce consumption in November, and um, what actually happened was is we were we were right at or a little bit low in November. And we were actually pulling from our bank already in December. So we were forecast to make around 800 kilowatt hours of electricity. And we only actually produced 480. So we were basically half of what we were supposed to produce. So we started pulling from winter months um, volume. So that mean that that bank we built up over the summer months was a little lower than anticipated because of some production limits. But then, you know, we started pulling from that bank a little harder than we thought we would coming into the year. Why I'm bringing that up is if we hop into my actual Alliant bill, which is our provider. So as we hop into a, to my Alliant energy, um, you know, usage here and showing you guys what happened. This is the distribution generation versus consumption chart. Just another look at how we we're kind of looking at the, the already, populated maps. What this doesn't take into account is any power I create that doesn't get used puts out into the into the actual grid, right? But anything I'm producing that I'm using just comes directly out of that balance. So your your meter will run in reverse when you're producing extra, but if you're using it, it, it doesn't know, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is this chart showing you basically any overages I made that would have been above my consumption and that kind of just compounds into what we need for the rest of the year. What we will see here is two things. Again, this doesn't go clear back to January, but you'll see that we started overproducing in March through April. You know, we were overproducing every month basically until we got into September. Then we kind of broke even. In October, we were still overproducing a little bit. And then in November, we basically started pulling from our bank of, electri of electricity. So from March, through October, we were generating more electricity than what we were using. And that helped build a bank towards winter months. Like I showed you on that chart, and again, the picture on the screen here, we were supposed to be, you know, not really pulling from the bank hardly at all until around December. And we started drawing from that bank in November, which not a huge deal, but you'll see that, you know, I didn't even produce 50% of my need in December. January, we were well down, which we knew we would, but we didn't also produce hardly any electricity. We had some very heavy snowfall early in the month that just didn't melt off because it was too cold. And that really affects production numbers because, again, shading is your number one factor in reducing the amount of power you make. We don't have, like, you know, if you don't have the sun rays, there's no power being made. And then in February, you know, we, we, um, we were well short. We used a lot of electricity because it was cold. I've got that electric heater in the garage, and we just didn't produce hardly anything at all. So what I'm trying to say here is this map tells me two things. I actually used more electricity than I normally do. Um, I know I did that because I, I put a dehumidifier in my basement when those use a pretty decent amount of electricity, you know, around 30 bucks a month worth of electricity. And that was an addition that wasn't planned for in my initial production numbers. I also added a couple other auxiliary items that pull power, but not quite as much. You know, I have been doing some welding in my garage. I've been running some 3D printers. All of that adds to the pot of electricity that you use every month and, you know, wasn't figured into the initial estimates. Those increased consumptions paired with, you know, lower production numbers resulted in some bills. I actually did have some electricity bills. Now, this is just an example of some of the bills I had throughout the year. Generally speaking, my bill was around $9. <laughs> Not, you know, that basically I'm paying for the connection fee. That's all that was. Um, and you can see... Based upon that, I got clear through December uh, with virtually no electrical bill. There is some parallel generation credits you get during those summer months when you're producing a lot of extra that you don't get in the winter months, so the bill is slightly higher. Come January, I had depleted my entire bank of credits, and in February, I had none of it, really nothing left. So anything that I didn't produce, I was paying for off of the grid. So looking at this... Obviously, the connection charges are what they are. That's not going away.
But essentially, I had around two hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred and fifty-four ish dollars of electricity costs on top of my solar generation that I had. Now, if I had better summer months, or I hadn't started pulling from that bank so fast, or I hadn't added my dehumidifier, or started doing more welding, or started doing more three D printing, I probably would have broke even. Um, there's just so many different variables that can affect your electrical bill. Again, it's all based upon usage. So the more you use, the more it costs. But if the system isn't sized for it, then, well, you know, that's, you can't fix that. Now, if it's sized for it and it underperforms due to the weather, there's nothing you really can do about it. That's just part of what Mother Nature does. And um, even if you had batteries, you're not producing enough power to overcome your consumption. So long story short, I had to spend some additional money out of pocket to um, pay for my electrical bill this year, which again, it is kind of what it is. Now my system was designed at 110% of my consumption. So I should add some flex space on the one end, you know, to use more power, but then it also allows from degradation of the panels. So you're still producing a good amount over time. Now, obviously you, you can't, you can't run at 110% of your usage if the, the production rates are down due to the weather, but there's nothing you can do about that. Mother nature is gonna do what she, she does. Long story short, it's performing very well. Now we did have a couple of down months there. There's a lot of wildfire smoke, which affects some of those production months in June and July. Um, and we actually are probably using a little bit more electricity than we historically have been, as we've had a dehumidifier and some of that, you know, different type of auxiliary stuff in the house is gonna, is gonna use a little power. I still would recommend solar for you all if you're interested in doing it. You know, I think the biggest sales pitch I have for anybody, I'm not a salesman by any means, is that you're gonna be paying the bill for the next you know, eight to 10 years anyways. So why wouldn't you go ahead and try to pay down that? You know, it only makes sense, so much sense, too much sense. I don't know, it's hard to say, but I'm very happy with my decision to go solar and I would recommend you guys look into it yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down, but give me some thoughts and feedback on how I can improve this content for you all. Because again, the the intent of this channel is for me to learn this stuff the hard way so you guys don't have to and, you know, help you guys out. If you guys found me entertaining or maybe even like the content a little bit, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button, follow along, and, you know, see what else we have done going on around here on the property. We got some projects this spring we want to do, some more outdoor related things, and I think you guys might find them, you know, fun. My name's Kyle. Take care of one another. Until the next time, I'll see ya.